What's going on, everyone? So, thanks to Rob Palenka and the press conference that the Lakers held earlier today, we got an update in regards to Jared Vanderbilt. It's something we've all been kind of waiting around for. Originally, we got reports that Jared Vanderbilt was expecting to miss training camp as well as preseason, but we were wondering, is he going to be ready for the regular season? Uh, what actually happened? Why did he just now have surgery? What is the deal? And Rob Palenka provided us with some details. Uh, he went in for the initial uh, injury uh, and had the surgery. And the doctor recommended, hey, you have this little element in your other foot. You might as well get both done at the same time because you're going to have to be off your feet regardless for several months to kind of get that first one healed. Might as well go in and do both and have both procedures. So Jared Vanderbilt actually had both procedures done uh, at the same time which is why uh, we're in the position that we're in with Jared Vanderbilt. Now, training camp, he's missing. Preseason, he's missing. There is optimism. Rob Palenka said they are optimistic that he may be ready to go for the start of the season. But obviously, it's one of those things where you don't want to rush him back. Take your time. Don't hurry him in, and now he gets hurt. I'd rather him miss 20 games to play the last 62 than him play the first 20 games and miss the last 62. We need Jared Vanderbilt. We need Jared Vanderbilt badly. We saw how badly we needed him all season last season. Even in just like that specialty defense assignment role, right? even if you're playing Jared Vanderbilt 10, 15 minutes a game, you know, or maybe four minutes a quarter, where it's just like, hey, you see Luca, see Kyrie, you see any of the guys? That guy, slow him down for the next four minutes. And you just kind of play him in spots. We need him for that. Look at the Denver series, for example. Jamal Murray hit two game-winning shots, right? If you have Jared Vanderbilt, I don't think he hits both those shots. Maybe he hits one. I take my chances that he doesn't hit either, but he's not hitting both of those on Jared Vanderbilt. Because who do you think in that position, in that spot, is going to be defending Jamal Murray? Game on the line? You're putting your best perimeter defender on that guy. All right. So I do see that Jared Vanderbilt could have been the difference in that series. Would have been enough for us to actually win that series? Who knows? But we would have been in a much better position. And if we had Jared Vanderbilt throughout the season, we probably win a couple more games than we did, which we might not ever even play Denver. So the way Jared Vanderbilt impacts the game is so important, is so significant. So many people I see go, he's not really this game changer. He's not really that. He gets played off the court at times and all that stuff. But they're missing the little details that Jared Vanderbilt does and provides. So many people, hey, it's terrible offense. It's terrible. But he impacts the offensive side. Creating live ball turnovers lead to more possessions for the Lakers. Creating turnovers, period, lead to more possessions for the Lakers. Keeping balls alive. Getting second chance you know, offensive rebounds. Give us more offensive opportunities. Darvin Ham was able to figure out how to make Jared Vanderbilt at least serviceable out there offensively. You don't think J.J. Reddick's going to be able to do that? You don't think this coaching staff, which is better than, our, than Darvin Ham with his coaching staff is? Of course they are. He's not going to be this elite three-point shooter. I mean, if he was, like, watch out. But no one's expecting Jared Vanderbilt to be this, like, dead-eyed three-point shooter. But what he's great at, he is elite at. I mean, it's not like that's I'm not just saying that like, the eye test, the numbers, all of it back it up. He is elite defensively. He is one of, if not the best perimeter defenders on ball defenders in the entire NBA. You look at the tape. You look at the numbers. You're like, this dude is go look at your favorite stars and how they match up against Jared Vanderbilt and, and tell me he's not the best de defensive player in the or perimeter defender in the league. The dude is just absolute A1 because he has the size. He has the length. He can defend one through five. Obviously, you don't want him getting switched on like a Jokic or anything like that, but Jared Vanderbilt's one of the few guys that you would trust if that were to happen, at least make things difficult, right? Obviously, he's giving up a size advantage, but he's one of the guys that can switch and defend a uh, 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 Kyrie Irving or a Steph Curry 
and then go switch on, you know, a Kevin Durant and hold his own and make Kevin Durant work and make things difficult. There's very few guys in the league that are capable of doing all of that. And we've seen what his defensive impact does for the Lakers. Lakers are like middle of the pack defensively with Anthony Davis. Just Anthony Davis. You add Jared Vanderbilt, we saw Lakers were the top defense in the league. Because Jared Vanderbilt covers so much ground. He doesn't just stop the guy in front of him. His ability to switch, his ability to recover. I mean, we talked about it, not really last season because we didn't get to see it much, but the previous season talked about it all, even all through the playoffs. How it looked at times like Jared Vanderbilt was teleporting out there on the basketball court. Like he's just instant transmission, just <laughs> teleporting all over the place like he's Goku. Like it was insane watching Jared Vanderbilt defend. Go watch Jared Vanderbilt defending Steph Curry in that second round. And tell me that's not one of the greatest defensive displays you've ever seen. I mean, he had sequences where he's literally chasing around Steph, denying him the basketball. Steph ends up getting the basketball. He's staying in front of him, falling around, forces Steph to give up the basketball. He switch over to, to stop uh, the, the layup, right? Which then the guy passes it back to Steph, which then Kev, uh, uh, Jared Vanderbilt ends up stopping Steph again. It's just, he's just everywhere. And you pair that with the guy in Anthony Davis that covers so much ground, that covers so that can do so many things versatile, versatility-wise on the defensive side. Those two as a pairing, you just you have everything you need defensively. Obviously, you, you throw in a Gabe Vincent and like a Max Christie, Lakers could be a top defense. You you have those pieces you need to be very good defensively in spots, right? In the games, right? Say there's whatever, seven seconds left, eight seconds left. You need a defensive unit. You could easily go with a you know, Gabe Vincent, Max Christie, Jared Vanderbilt. LeBron can lock down when he needs to for a possession. And then Anthony Davis, you actually have a very good defensive unit now. You are really good out there defending on the perimeter as well as on the interior. But... You need those guys healthy, and you need those guys to stay healthy. That's why if I'm the Lakers, you take your time with Jared Vanderbilt. As much as we all want him back, as much as we need him back, and as optimistic as the Lakers appear to be about Jared Vanderbilt being ready to start the season, even if he is ready to start the season, I imagine that the Lakers kind of take their time with him. I don't think the Lakers are going to go, now he's playing 30 minutes a game. I think they'll kind of slowly build him throughout the course of the season. But as I mentioned earlier, I would rather you sit him the first 20 games of the season so he can finish the last 62 and we can really make a push, get some good seating, and he's healthy to go for the playoffs than you force him to play or he feels like he has to hurry up and expedite and get back and comes back and then he ends up getting hurt in that first 20 games and now... He doesn't play the last 62 games. He's not healthy for the playoffs, and it's an absolute mess. Keep things in perspective. We have a healthy roster, for the most part, outside of uh, Christian Wood, as well as Gabe Vincent, or, uh, Jared Vanderbilt. <laughs> just, I'm just naming all the guys that were injured last year. No, Gabe Vincent is ready to go. Jalen Uchifino is ready to go. Rob Plinka confirmed that as well. Basically, Christian Wood and Jared Vanderbilt, the two guys right now. But... You have a healthy enough roster overall to where you can weather the storm until Jared Vanderbilt's 100% cleared, ready to go. And then once he is 100% cleared, ready to go, then bring him in. Let's go win some basketball games. Again, even if you're just playing him as, a, as an assignment guy, even if you're just playing him in, in spots, 15 minutes a game, four minutes a quarter, whatever, right? Like, that's all you really need from Jared Vanderbilt. Whatever he gives you offensively is just icing on the cake. If he, if JJ Reddick can work it out to make him serviceable on the offensive side and give you whatever, 10 points a game, eight points a game, that's perfect because he's not going to give up more than that, right? Like, and, and he's going to be defending the best player on the other team. So that's where he, he is so valuable and so important. And we need Jared Vanderbilt this season, right? If he, if there starts to become these persistent issues, though, because it is a foot injury. And we have seen in the past foot injuries really damage players' careers. 
it, it's unfortunate, but you may have to look to trade him. I wouldn't trade him right now. I'd wait and see, right? Let it, everything kind of play out. Let him get back in and then kind of evaluate him. See how does he look? Things are kind of, he's kind of dealing with a little knickknack stuff. Then maybe you look to, to move off of him. But for right now, I just, I think he's too valuable, too important. Um, he's really the, the only guy we have that is elite defensively, not name Anthony Davis, of course, but talking about outside of the perimeter guys and all that, like he's the guy. So if you can keep him to be that guy, even in small spots, you need to keep him to be that guy in small spots. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, you disappointed about Jared Vanderbilt? Do you think, hey, take your time. Bring him back when he's healthy and he's ready to go. Let's go win the championship, right? Let's go win a bunch of games this season. Uh, again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.